You may ask, what is a quilt? What is a quilt as you go? What is a true caveman quilt as you go scrap quilt? I'll answer those questions and more when we come back. Hello everybody and beautiful people and beautiful person. Rob here from Quilting in the Man Cave and today I'm going to answer the question is what is a quilt? Well a quilt is a blanket that has three layers to it. It has a backing fabric, a batting, and a beautiful, hopefully beautiful quilt to or a topping. Now, and quilting goes back hundreds of years. Uh, there's lots of stories behind it. Uh, now, quilt as you go, on the other hand, there are several ways in which you can do it. Now, to me, the true quilt as you go, you have your backing fabric, which I have right here. And I'm using a white tone on tone. You have your batting right here. And the quilt as you go part, you're going to make your block as you go. Now I know to me that's the true way of doing quilt as you go. Now I know there are other people out there that do it different ways. They may, they may make their block using paper or um, and then tear the paper out when the block is made. They may do it uh, as a foundation on like muslin or bleached muslin or all kinds of other different types of fabrics. To me that's not a true quilt as you go because you're just creating a block then you still have to sandwich that block with um, your batting and a backing. So to me that's not a true quilt as you go. Now don't flame me for that. That's just my opinion. And my opinion is just my opinion. I'm not saying that what I do is totally right. And I'm not saying what others do is totally right or totally wrong. It's just how I interpret quilt as you go. So I'm going to put the, uh, the tip the camera down and I'm going to show you how I get started with making one of these blocks. Alright, I'm going to bring the camera down now. Give me a minute. Hopefully I don't make you seasick here. Alright, so I have my batting now, and I have my, my backing fabric. I'm going to place the backing fabric face up, and I'm going to center it in my block. Now, as far as making your blocks, or whatever size block you want to make, that's totally up to you. However, I would suggest not making anything smaller than like a 7 inch block, because it's it, that means that many more blocks that you have to make and that many more strings that you have to have. So I, I just suggest an ideal starting size would be a 10 or a 12 inch block. My block that I'm making for my quilt as you go quilt, it, they're, they're, right now they're cut at 13 inches. However, I will be trimming them down later on to a 12 inch size. However, my backing fabric, or not my backing fabric, my uh, batting is cut at 14 inches. Now I also suggest you cut that just a little bit bigger because you know when you quilt, it tends to pull things together a little bit. So you want to have a, just a little bit extra both of both your batting and your backing so that you can trim eventually trim it down to the desired size. Now again I suggest a 10 inch block for a starter. It's you get enough sewing and enough uh, oh strings and it makes it for an interesting 
scrap quilt. All right, so I have my my back my backing face up on my batting. Now this is how I do the, my my version. I'm going to fold back a little section of it here, and I'm going to apply apply a little bit of school glue to that and press it down. Then I'm going to turn it. I'm going to do the other another corner. Do the same thing. I'm just going to put a little bit of the glue stick here just to hold it in place and then press it down so you get a good adhesion. And I'm going to make sure I do that to all four corners. You don't need a heck of a lot, just enough to hold it in place. And you want to make sure that each time you do it that you make it extremely flat, no bumps, no bubbles, no ridges. No runs, no drips, no errors. And just firm it down so that glue adheres to uh, both the uh, backing and the batting. And just keep smashing it out and spreading it out as you go. Just so you make sure you have no, like I said, no ridges, no bumps in either your batting or your backing fabric. And once that is done, we're going to f we're going to line it up here on our cutting mat. Now this is not my normal cutting mat. I just you grabbed this one because I figured I might have to be moving things around a little bit, and it's a little bit easier for me to uh, move this. Now I'm just going to trim the batting away from the backing fabric. I'm going to do all four sides. Now if I had my rotating mat out, unfortunately it's being used for another project at the moment and I didn't want to disturb it. So I'm doing it this way. I know it's a little bit more difficult, but it still works. side. Okay, so it's all trimmed up. And now I'm going to flip it over. Make sure that, again, just make sure there's no, no ripples, no bubbles or anything here. And now I'm going to take a, a strip. I'm, I'm, for all my blocks, I'm trying to do a lighter colored center. All right, where's my scissors? Oh, gosh. No, I just had them here. I actually, this is, this, uh, I'm recording this again because the first time my, uh, video camera kind of messed up on me and I lost five segments of this video. So give me a minute, I'll be right back. Alrighty, I'm back. Got my scissors in hand. I'll put them off to the side now. I'm going to, what I did is I just trimmed this two and a half inch strip. Now it doesn't have to be two and a half. I just, I, I'm electing to keep all my center strips at two and a half and in a lighter off-white or cream color. So once I've got that laid out, and it doesn't have to be perfect in this case, but you want it close to being perfect. And I'm going to take my glue stick, I'm going to peel back this one side and I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue in here just to hold it down. Just makes things a little bit easier. 
Now make sure that you use a like a school glue that's non-toxic, uh, non-acidic, and is safe for uh, photos. So okay, I got that laid out. I'm just gonna make sure that it's all nicely adhered. All right, so there's that. Now that's face up. Now I'm gonna grab another another strip here. I've already pulled a couple out. I've got my big bag, the 12 pound bag of strips alongside me. And I'm gonna pick out another one here. And I'm gonna trim it down to the appropriate size. And I'm going to lay this one face uh, right side down. So your first strip was right side up. Your second strip is right side down. Alright, so I will be right back after I go to the sewing machine and I will stitch this down and I'll be right back to, sh to keep this video going. Alrighty, I have my first, uh, first and second strips are sewn down. You just so with a quarter inch seam, or it doesn't have to be exactly quarter inch, it could be off. This is nothing that's, it has to be exact, but close. So then after you sew it, flip it back, press it down, and we're going to add on a next strip. So I'm going to put this one here, even though it's close to the, it's, close in value to the first stitch. I'm just going to go ahead and put that one down and then I'm going to go ahead and get an, another strip and I'm going to put it on the other side. Well these, I didn't cut these very straight but that's one good thing about it. They don't have to be perfectly straight. Alright, so I'm going to take this over to the machine. I'm going to stitch both of these down. Then I'm going to flip it and press it well. Make sure you always press between, between adding a, uh, a strip to it. You don't want any little pleats or anything. You want it pressed totally flat. Oh, my fingernails are disgusting. I was out playing in the yard a little bit ago and I didn't... Uh, clean my fingernails. Sorry, you'll have to deal with it. All right, I'll be back as soon as I get these two strips sewn on and pressed open. Well, all righty then. Those two strips have been secured, pressed, and ready to move on to adding something else as a strip. I'm going to put this brown print on next. I'm just going to line it up so I can trim it down a little bit. This is such a such a mindless project. It really is, unless you're trying to work out a, defin a definite pattern. You just grab strips and just keep adding to it. All right, I'm gonna find something to put on this side. Just dig into the, the bag of strips here and see what I come up with. Uh, I don't wanna use this. This is, this is just a one inch strip and by the time you sew your quarter inch seam and two quarter inch seams that just leaves you a half inch so that's it's not the best idea I wouldn't use anything less than an inch and a half for a strip I'm just trying to dig something here that kinda sort of goes I cut so many one inch strips which was a big mistake What's this? What's this? Something light. Nope, don't want to use that. That's too white. I want something that's got color. Lots and lots of colors in it. Well, I think we'll do this, maybe. 
And if this fits, oh, that won't fit on that side. So, so much for that idea. I have to find something else. Well, maybe we'll use this. This little plaid. And uh, it's really a good idea to have different widths of, uh, of strips. You know, like starting at one and a half and maybe going up to two and a half, three at the very widest. I wouldn't go much bigger than that. Definitely not if you're going to do a, uh, a smaller block. Right, I think we'll just use that, that little yellow and white plaid. Alright, so I will go to the sewing machine, get these stitched down, and pressed open and then we can see what it looks like. Me, I was going to say maybe I'll do this but I didn't cut it big enough so we'll go with the original plan here. Just trying to keep it simple. I don't, I don't want to overthink the process. Just keep it simple and as organic as you can and have fun with it. That's the biggest thing. Just have fun. Let your inhibitions go and just do what you want with it. Alright, I will be right back as soon as I get these stitched down and pressed open. Okay, so the next set of strips has been sewn on and pressed open and flat. So I'm going to select more colors. I'm going to, for this next one, I'm going to go with this beautiful blue and purple batik and trim it down to the appropriate size. I think you all are getting the general idea of how to do this now. I'm just going to sew these on. Now this one here is not going to be enough to cover that. So after I get it pressed, I'm going to evaluate whether or not I really need to add another strip to that, or if I'm going to lose that little bit when I do my trimming. We'll see, we'll see after I do this. Now the idea is you want to get a nice selection of colors, or what, whatever trips your trigger, let's put it that way. So, all right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish this entire block and when it's done I will come back and I will show you the next step in this quilt as you go caveman style string quilt. Be back in a few. Alrighty, I have all the strips sewn, flipped and pressed. Now I'm going to just flip this block over and I'm going to trim it down even with the backing block or backing fabric I should say. Now this is going to be a two-step process for we first want to get it squared up with uh, the backing fabric as I just said and then we're going to trim it down one more time after it's quilted down to our final size that we want which in my case is going to be 12 inches now bits like this here you might want to save some of these especially like this one because it's ideal for filling in uh, the little corner bits if you just need a little piece to fill in the corner and I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. last side to trim up. All 
All right, all four sides are trimmed, and now you get to see what this looks like. Hey, isn't that nice? So our next step is we're going to quilt this, and then after it's totally quilted, or the, everything is quilted the way you want it, then we're going to come back and we're going to square it up, or I'm going to square mine up, to a 12-inch block. Now something that I did neglect to mention before was whatever thread you use, make sure it's something that you like because it is going to show up on the back. Now in my case I'm just using a medium gray because I wanted it to show a little bit but I didn't want it to completely overtake the back. So I'm using just a gray, medium gray. So there we go, and I'm going to quilt it with the same color thread. All right, I am going to, I'm actually going to take a break for a minute. I need to get a bit of something to eat and drink. So I'll be back in just a few minutes. For you, it'll be just a second, but for me, it'll probably be 20 minutes to a half hour. See you in a bit. All right, let's do a little quilting here. What do you think? All right, I have my machine set up on a serpentine stitch. Um, I really, really like the serpentine stitch when I'm doing these types of, of uh, string quilts. Adds a little movement to it. I'm using the same color thread that I did the piecing with. So let's get started here. Needle down. And I'm going, for doing this, I'm going to actually disengage my foot pedal and I'm going to use my start stop button. Now you do want to make sure like when you're regularly or like if you're quilting a regular quilt you do want to keep it pulled taut not excessive but just so everything lays flat if you need to use uh, quilting gloves go ahead and use them I sometimes do sometimes I don't my it's plenty humid enough right now where my hands are not sweaty but they're damp so I have a good grip on my fabric all right let's rock and roll here I want to get this done it's getting late in the afternoon and the, it's gonna start getting too dark Rocco I don't need your help here I was sewing earlier and he came up and his snout hit the uh, one of the buttons here and <laughs> changed one of the settings on the machine and I was like oh my gosh but kids will be kids So how did I accumulate so many different strips? Well, I'm going to tell you. Every time I went to a, a quilt store, or every time I went to Joann's, or maybe even Walmart, I went to the fabric sections, and all of them have fat quarters. So I, I'd select oh, one or two fat quarters and bring it home, and I would cut it into the desired strip width. And I did that for, oh my gosh, a year, a little over a year perhaps, and just kept throwing them in my garbage bag of strings and strips. And sooner or later, you do get enough to make a scrap string quilt like I'm making here today. You know, another way of of getting uh, extra fat quarters is like 
Um, Missouri Star Quilt usually has uh, mystery fat quarters that you can get at a reasonable price. And so I may throw in a couple, you know, add a couple into my order when I order online. Uh, Cotton Cuts has a like a snippet bag. I think it's like ten or fifteen dollars. I've forgotten. It's been a while since I ordered one. Um, and you can get strips out of that. Yeah, there's all kinds of ways you can get strips. Extra jelly rolls that you have laying around, or uh, oh, even extra binding strips. You could you could uh, press those open and. Use those. I'm sorry, I just bumped the camera. It's kind of difficult sewing like this when you have a camera just inches away from where you're working. And it bounces around as I'm kicking the table. And But I'm sorry about that. I don't have uh, a proper studio for making videos so I have to make do with what I have and the equipment that I have until such time where I might be able to afford something a little bit better we're just gonna have to deal with what I have I'm not complaining at least I have something so I'm just go ahead I'm gonna get this uh, quilted and it's going to be a little while yet. I still have to do this, the rest of this side and this whole half a side. So I'll be here with you for a little while longer. I think the biggest or the best bit of advice that I can offer when making your these uh, caveman style strip quilts, scrappies. Uh, quilts is just have fun with it. Cut a bunch of strips up or just start collecting you know old jelly roll strips. You know what even those uh, Moda scrap bags that are that you can get for like $12 from Green Fairy Quilt. You can use those as well. All kinds of ways to get strip, strings and strips. I'm going to have to check my bobbin thread here as I uh, think I'm getting ready to play bobbin chicken. Oh, I think I got enough for one more bit here, I think. This is not the time. What am I getting snagged on here? Oh. All right, this is not the time to run out of uh, bobbin thread because it's very difficult to try to match the stitching that you've done. So you basically just have to rip, it, rip out what you've done and start all over again. Up, oh, got a little bit left here. I think I have enough to do this here. Let's keep our fingers crossed. small section here to do and then I'm going to swap out and put a new bobbin in all right cut my thread move this out of the way oh heck I had plenty there, but I, since I got it out, I'm going to swap it out.
get a uh, leader started here. Okay, now we're going to just flip this around and we're going to finish the side that didn't get done. Okay, rotate it. I suspect you could do all kinds of different stitches with this if you want. I'm, all these new fangled machines have hundreds of stitches on it. I'm sure you can always find something that you'd like. Or you could do uh, a little free motion quilting, uh, matchstick quilting, whatever you want to do. I just happen to like this uh, serpentine stitch. I don't like the serpentine, serpentine stitch on this machine as much as I like on my my Janome 6600P, but that machine is a little bit under the weather and can't be using it right now, so I'm stuck using this. I mean, this one isn't bad. I love this machine, but I just happen to like the serpentine stitch better on my Janome. And we're getting getting there. We'll be done here momentarily. I, this is this will be all for this video. I'm going to finish making up some more blocks, and then I'll be back with a part two of how I will put these together and make a full quilt. I mean, it's not going to be tomorrow or anything like that. It's going to be a little while because I've still got to make quite a few blocks. But be on the lookout for that. Shit. It's snagged there again. Now this is not going to be any type of a competition quilt. It might be a donation quilt for a homeless family or a homeless person. Or I might just, if, depending if how much I like it, I might just make it big enough for my queen size bed. I don't know. It all depends on how, it, how these blocks turn out and if I like them. So far I think it's pretty sweet. This is the first time that I'm actually making it as a complete scrap quilt. I usually use coordinated jelly rolls with coordinating uh, layer cakes, and that's how I make my caveman quilt, usually. It's what I've done in the past. This is going to be the first time doing it as a complete scrap quilt, so I'm anxious to see how it's going to turn out. These quilt as you go projects are ideal if you have limited space or a, a, a smaller machine that doesn't have a very wide throat. It's easy to do these. You know, for me in the man cave here, this is just an ideal project for me. I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to join the Caveman Club on Buy Me a Coffee. It, um, it's only $5 a month, and for your $5 you get exclusive content that's not available on regular YouTube channel, or my regular YouTube channel. Get, uh, special giveaways for members only and that's a, a quarterly giveaway shout outs to uh, on my all my videos 
So yeah, it's, there's a few other perks here that kind of just have escaped me at the moment, but and maybe I might be adding more to it as time goes on. But yeah, please have it. Give it a give it some thought. It's five dollars a month, and you get all those uh, perks that I just mentioned. Or if if you don't want to commit to a five dollars a month. You could just go to buy me a coffee and say, hey, I want to buy Rob a, a coffee. And you could buy just like one, two, up to five at a time. And like anything helps to help support my channel. You know, my channel's not monetized. I don't make any money from, from it. Everything that I buy comes out of my own pocket. I have no sponsors and I just want to sh share my love of quilting with everybody so there we go it is now completely quilted I'll flip it around and you can see the back looks pretty cool can you see it let's do this maybe you can see it a little bit better it is all quilted now just ready to be put together with some s sashing strips and I'll have a quilt done, but it'll be a little while yet, so be sure that you keep an eye out for part two of this where I actually show you how I connect all the, the blocks to make a quilt. So I hope that you enjoyed this little video slash little tutorial or tutorial or how, the, how I, the caveman, makes his caveman strip quilts. If you did, please give it the thumbs up, like, share, comment, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And hey, thanks to all those new subscribers that recently joined my channel. I really do appreciate, I appreciate you all so much. So, from the boys and I, Rocco, Buster, Buck, and Little Journey, and me, the dad, I am going to say so long for now. I'm tired. I'll see y'all again very, very soon. Bye-bye. Whoosh.